So with the statement of Sunday Adelaide and that of Apostle Johnson Suleiman with regards to the death of Archbishop Benson Edahosa, one said that he finished and accomplished his assignment and left. The other said that God had to take him away because of what is going on around his person. Who do you believe? Comparing this now to the death of Prophet T.B. Joshua, his loyal followers, even people that I never knew were his friends, have said that he was taking he, he has transitioned. And those who hate him would say, ah, thank God, the charlatan has finally died. Who would you believe? Because of course, Apostle Johnson Suleiman worked closely with Bishop Ibn Zidahosa. So what, do you expect him to say something different? But now you see someone that knew him and had a personal encounter with him said God told him. <laughs> in his left ear or right ear that this is why he had to die who do you believe who is speaking of god is god here to make people confused do you understand what i'm saying anyway let's go on now this is one thing i like about the words of dr sunday adelaide listen to this in fact can i take him change a lot of things from his book from his books since he had written before he went and retracted them and rewrote some of the books mm -hmm. for example in one of the books he used to th say that uh he had never been sick and since he was healed and he's never but which is not true you know then uh but he, he corrected that then uh he also corrected the fact that before bef before he used to claim that the minimum age of every believer should be 120 years and that he would not die before 120 years. That Jesus told him or he appeared to him or something like that. But before he died, those things disappeared from his book. People who are young like you, we you never might, will never know that he used to say that. But people who are around in the 70s and in the 80s, they know that if I, so the old books, the first editions of those old books, they are still in some people's house now. Where he used to say he would live 120 years and he would not die. What happens normally is that uh, Idaosa, the same thing that happened to Kenneth Hagin is what happened to Idaosa. Mm. Idaosa and any one of us, uh, we don't have to do the most appalling um, practices uh, ourselves. Mm. What happens normally is this the fathers always err, maybe by a meter. Mm -hmm. But then the children we air by uh, by hundred meters. Then the grandchild, the grandchild we air by a kilometer. So that's what happened uh, with Idaosa. When I got to uh, Bishop Idaosa, Archbishop Idaosa invited me to his place in 1996. When I went there in 96. What I saw there, I had God clearly that he's going to call him up. Now you see why the proliferation of things in the Christendom has gone to the extreme. There is that multiplying effect of what used to happen back in the day now to what is happening today. Have you seen it? So if my papa did two, I want to do ten. If I'm doing 10, my son should do 100. Of course, it's in the Bible. Multiplication. A thousand fold, two thousand fold, you understand? So, just like we looked at the words of Apostle Johnson Suleiman, reference is very important for encounter. No wonder. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder. No wonder they build relationships for verification. Just like before you get verified on YouTube here, you need to have, you know, a lot of subscribers. Like I always beg you people to subscribe. Or maybe for you to be verified on Instagram, you need to have a lot of following or something. But for you to be verified in the Christendom as a leader of significance, you need to build relationships with people in the same cadre so that your relevance can be drawn from there. You know, imagine Suleiman being invited to the redemption camp to preach to the redeemers. Redeemers will say, oh wow, nice, nice sermon. So tomorrow if Suleiman is having crusade, they will be there. If maybe they are in anywhere in the world where there is no redeemed church, they can go to Suleiman's church because that can be a substitute. Why? By virtue of Papa's relationship with this person. You used to call me here every week. That Paul, he calls me here on my phone every week until I to remove it. Pray for me. Pray for him. Man of God. He's a good man. But the, if he will not go through the process and the discipline 
of training himself, submitting himself to learn. Mm -hmm. But he cannot because his allegiance is to Oyedepo. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to get him offended. He's, you know, the same thing with many others like Samadei, I mean, all of them. They want, to, they want to say, okay, pastor, we are learning from you. We want to learn. We want to do this. But they are afraid of what their daddies will say. Because the, it's, the culture is such that you have to be subservient. Yeah. I don't know if you are getting the point because I think you must be getting it now. So all of this is a planned thing. It's the same thing as what you see in politics. So sometimes I talk about politics right here on the channel, but most of you don't watch. But I will keep creating content as I react to what is happening in the political sphere, not just in Nigeria, but in the world in general. So when they have this relationship, their errors are always to some extent covered by their relationship in the ministry. That is why you see when Mike Davids and Suleiman had their issue, if Pastor Ia Duboye attended that anniversary, which was already long planned, to a great extent, without all the excuses that people had why he didn't attend, it would have been a covering for him that Apostle Johnson Suleiman is truly a man of God, which I don't know whether he's true or not true, I beg, or maybe whatever he's against him, was against him at that point, was just, you know, noise. But AIW is a smart person, he stayed away from the noise. But of course, hey, listen, many pastors from Redeemer attended that particular program. I heard there were delegations that came instead of him. But even when he was preaching to the message, he was still talking about Papa is coming, Papa is coming. In the end, Papa did not come. Even though, yes, he acknowledged the presence or the to be presence of his father and the Lord. I watched the whole sermon. I observe what is happening just like you. But the difference between you and I is that I don't type my opinions in comments. I put a camera before my face and I say my opinions out loud and I get to make money from it. In case you don't know why I'm creating content on YouTube. Now let's talk about the burial. Sorry my videos now are long. Someone said last time that my videos are too short. Now I'm making them long. I hope you watch to the end. Now many people that had an encounter with Prophet T.B. Joshua said he was called home. Just like, but is there anything wrong with people saying that Prophet T.B. Joshua was called home or he transitioned? Because they knew him. Now Solomon Shams is a creator on the platform that really focuses on talking about men of God exposing charlatans. I respect him for his work on the platform. He has said something with regards to the newsletter about Prophet T.B. Joshua's death that to some extent, them saying that his spirit remains with us and wanting to bury him at the church. Oh my god. Him saying that Prophet T.B. Joshua to be buried in synagogues of all nation will lead to being him being idolated. Necromancy doesn't really hold water to some extent. And I'm going to be telling you why. Because there are some things you have to go back to history to understand certain things why they are the way they are or why some people will be maybe having motivation to do this or why such conversations I think shouldn't really be happening. Even though it's possible that what he's saying can happen for real. But I'm going to be taking you down memory lane. So if you are interested in this, please stay. Please don't go stay, okay? Now listen to Feb Idahosa, the son of Archbishop Bessin Idahosa. I have seen this man one on one myself when I was serving doing my NYC in Edo State in this people's church, Winlow's church upstairs there. I was there in that particular program so I have seen this man one on one. Listen to what he had to say about his father's death, his burial tomb and let's come back to the video. So there's, an, uh, there's a monument in church i think there's your father's grave yes, and uh, they set up that and i understand people come there for pilgrimage and all that whose idea is it well, to the, set up that the idea for it was it was after he passed away there was a committee that set up the the, the mausoleum okay for his, for his cool. body's laid and things like that the idea was not only to make it a place of pilgrimage so to speak but mm. it's i think people just see that oh wow this is where he was buried yeah. they want to come and see the place they want to come and pray they want to come and pray they want to come and pray they want to come and be part of their whole experience that's what it, that's that's what it's there for it's, yeah. it's not there's nothing to make that an image where people come and bow down or anything mm. like that no no it's a place where you come and you say the hill is a man who did a great thing for his country mm. and it should make you reflect on what can you do for your exactly. country also yeah, I found it in very interesting. When I went there, to, it, it kind of connected me to him. I never wow. met him in my life. So when I went really? there this morning, I just stayed like them, like, wow. Wow. I didn't meet you when you were alive, but today I've met you in spirit. 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 Oh, wow. I think I'm sure many people feel the same way. Very interesting. Now, can someone tell me why people go to Jerusalem for pilgrimage? Was the Archbishop buried in his village or was he buried in church? If you have an issue 
with Prophet T.B. Joshua not buried in his village but buried in his church premises even though oh come on I've been to Bensley Dahosa University myself come on I served in Edo State so when I talk about certain things I know what's up ask yourself a question why is it now wrong that Prophet T.B. Joshua would be buried in synagogue of all nations because as you heard him say he talked about the fact that some people can come there to pray some people can you know those way they for abroad they, when they talk their english they always they always sweet me some people can come there to pray but it's not as if they come to worship him they just come there to pray and you know see where it all started you know the whole experience you know hi god this is history coming back and i'm comparing this to right now yes it is possible that people can go there to synagogue to the and try to you know <laughs> pray to him or maybe you know believe that since his spirit is there or something that he was buried there that miracles can still happen all those things come on the bible even talks about it when once we are we are oh god oh god don't you read your bible how real are these things Recently, I was seeing on Instagram that a guy bought a car because he molded a butterfly in the tomb of the mom. A butterfly flew to his, his new car he bought and he wrote on his Instagram that the spirit of his mother or his mother has is happy that he bought a car because he saw a butterfly fly on, onto your hands when you bought your new car. Whether this is true or not true, this is how you, you yourself think sometimes. That you sleep and then you see, your, you see someone that died or see someone that died in your family. Those things can happen. Okay, so this is actually imbibed in the African culture and mentality, not even about Bible right now. Let's not even go into the necromancy. It's already in our medulla oblongata. You have been watching it in Hollywood now. Ah, somebody died, you see, Pyaw, spirit will appear. Ah, you killed me, you killed me. Have you not been seeing it? The things we see in movies, we think they are real. Or it's because they are real that they are being acted in the movies. Are you getting the point now? But what does Apostle Johnson Suleiman, who knows about... Prophet T.B. Joshua death because he was the one that said uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua was sick for two days before he died. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he knew it, whether it was divine ministration or he read the news. And he has talked about the death of Pastor Iya Adubuye, how he's going to die on a Sunday, how he's going to eat yam, upon the yam, blah, blah, blah. And we talked about it in the previous video. But in the next video, we are going to be looking at Apostle Johnson Suleiman. What is his own death plan like i said before because i am not a prophet everything i say here is based on what comes out of your pastor's mouth